Hello, Tiny Desk Adventurers. My name is Jonathan Sobolski, and today I'm going to talk to you about how you can use simple tools such as a pipe and a hammer, hammer to look at ecosystems of the past. That's right. So I am a marine biologist and a historical ecologist currently based in Hong Kong for my PhD. And what being a historical ecologist means is it's my job to tell the story of an ecosystem through time. And the ecosystem that I primarily research is the one right behind me. As many of you can tell, I study coral reefs. Now, coral reefs are super important to our world. As I'm sure many of you know, they are highly biodiverse. Even though they take up less than 1% of the seafloor, they contain more than 25% of our ocean's biodiversity. And this is because of something really special that corals do. So as animals, they grow and they build this calcium carbonate skeleton. And when they build enough of this skeleton, it creates a habitat. Or in other words, it actually creates physical space or homes for all of this biodiversity to come and live. And one of the main ways that I'm able to look at coral reefs through time, since we don't have a time machine, is through their fossil remains. Awesome. And one of the main ways we collect these fossils is through sediment push cores which is really just a fancy term for taking a big pipe and shoving it in the ground and then pulling it back out again. And that's exactly what you can see happening here. So this is a video of me and my old supervisor collecting a core from Guam, where I did my masters. And you see we first have to bang that core into the ground with a hammer underwater. And after that point, we have to cap the core on top so that we create a vacuum or a seal so that when we go down and pull the core out of the ground, which you'll see right here, we maintain the structure of the sediment and the fossils that we found inside. So we pull it out and then we go back to the lab and we open it up and we're able to see all the sediment and fossils that we've collected. And from this point, we then have to separate these cores into five centimeter segments so that we can stay organized. We dry those out and then we have to process it in the lab to find what's inside. To do this, we take the dried sediment and we put it in sieves and make sure we remove all the tags and then we shake it. Ooh. And once we're done shaking it, then the larger size fractions come out and we're able to collect and identify the coral skeletons. And these coral skeletons are magnificent and they're all unique because they each have their own individual coralites, which you can see here. And these coralites are specific to each coral species and they help us identify past biodiversity. And what my research in Hong Kong has shown is a trend that we've seen in other reefs around the world. And that's in the past, many coral reefs were dominated by something like this. This is what's known as a branching coral. This is a cropera, and this is a fast growing coral that you can see really makes a reef complex. There's many different areas where other species can hide or grow, and it just creates the habitat or the home space for many different marine creatures. Unfortunately, these corals tend to be the ones that are most impacted from human stressors, such as climate change or increased water temperatures. So as these corals start to die off, reefs are becoming more dominated by what we call massive corals, just like this massive fovid. These corals tend to be more resilient to stressors coming from outside their environment. Um, but as you can see, they're much simpler. They just look like a big rock and much less complex. So they really change the habitat or the function of this coral reef by decreasing the areas where other species can live. But there's good news. You can take this historical data you collect and put it towards conservation and restoration in the future. And that's exactly what's happening here in Hong Kong. 
there's other PhD students in the same lab that I am in, and they've used my historical data to infer what species should be here and what species were once here based on the fossils. And they're going into bays that have been cleaned up and they're restoring these corals. And as you can see by these pictures, they've seen great success and we're seeing really great coral growth in areas where they once were historically before human impacts. And if you ask me, that's a pretty cool use of a pipe, a hammer, and some coral skeletons. Thanks for watching.